in that, on that road of success, what child do not want to be successful? Show me a child, all right, after that mother, excuse me, majority of women, the majority of people in here this evening, the audience here this evening are women, all right? So all due respect to you women. But here's the question. On that day that you were in that doctor, in, in, laying on that bed, and the doctor was telling you to push, 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 and you might have been there making this type of face. Telling the doctor, I'm going to kill you, I hate you. And the doctor's telling you to push, push, push. Out of all that pain, all of a sudden the doctor says, oh, we got a baby boy. Who came out and said, Oh, look at my baby. I know by the time he gets 15 years old, yeah, you're going to be in the detention center. And I know by the time you get 20, you're going to be on the street corner. Oh, look at you. And I, oh, and by the time you get 30, you're going to be dead. Yeah, you're going to be dead. I'll be burying you. Yeah. I, I don't think so. No. But I do think this. I love my baby and I want nothing but success for my baby. Let's plan ahead. Purge rule the house. Setting the rules. A woman tells me, Mr. Dowridge, with the daughter standing here, 15 year old daughter, she puts me in the closet and then smokes a cigarette while I'm in the closet, throw the butts at me and burn me while I'm in the closet. Who runs the house? But I try to tell him to stop. I try to tell him to do. No, you know where that comes from? When a child is like this, oh, I love my baby. Go ahead, baby. You can do it. Mom, I'm staying out late at night. Go ahead. You can stay out. She's 10 years old. Mama, can I borrow the car? Sure, baby. She's only 13. Mama, can I have $50? Sure, baby. She's only 14. And then all of a sudden, guess what? It grows and it grows and it grows. And again, like I said earlier, they test it and they take it all the way to the, and then it's too late. So you got to set those rules in your house because guess what? First of all, it's you who pays that rent or that mortgage. It's you who get up every day to go get the sweat on your brow. Your brow. So every week or every two weeks or once a month, your paycheck comes home. It's you who go out and you purchase those necessary clothing for that child's wear. And I do believe, now correct me if I'm wrong, I do believe it's you <laughs> who go to those grocery stores and maybe $200, $300, $400 dollars worth of food you bring home. It's you and not the child. So who has the control switch? Why should we surrender the switch to a child when all that brings on is doom? So the rules, we have to set the rules, we have to set the limits, we have to set the boundaries. And we also have to bring in the morals and the values. No morals, no values. And that comes down to how can a child step up to a grown man and blow his brains out and then laugh about it? And we see it on TV where, you know, the evening news show him on TV and he just sits there. <laughs> I wish I would have done, done it again. Yeah, no remorse. No remorse. No remorse. I was watching a movie the other night and my wife, she got on and she said, you're always watching these tight movies. Where, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the actor Vin Raines. He played in Mission Impossible. All right? So anyway, he's playing this gangster who's doing time. All right? uh, his son was Terrence Howard. I don't know if you know him. Anyway, uh, what happened is, Vin Raines got out of prison. He wanted to change his life. Jim Brown, he met up with Jim Brown, who was playing a lifetime prisoner, who, you know, talked to him and tried to help him to change his life, which he did. So he comes home. Now, Terrence is taking on his role. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So Vin Raines is now, because he's changed, he's trying to what? Remold his son, but guess what? It's too late. The son winds up killing him. That's real life scenarios. That's a movie, but this is real life scenarios. So we have to set the rules. We have to set the, the, the pattern early in life. Because one thing, if we can do that, such as I told my son when he was little, I said, look, don't fear me. Respect me. 
I don't want you to fear me. My dad worked on fear. I'm working on respect. Of course, respect your children. Because they have rights as well. But they cannot infringe their rights upon you by telling you that, hey, wait a minute, I run this house. I don't care if that child is six feet tall, seven feet tall. Who run this house? I run this house. Go on, now. <laughs> <laughs>